everyone, so we are back for another episode of our Colorful Cover series. Yeah. We've officially made it through the entire rainbow, so yeah. now we're moving on. Um, um, do every shade we can think of, because yeah. we like doing this series. They are very fun. And Sally is dressed appropriately yeah. for <laughs> this video, because we're going to be doing books with white covers. So if you're unfamiliar, just in case, this is a series of videos we've made. Um, we'll leave a link to a playlist in the description down below. And we recommend you books based solely on the color of the cover. The books that we like that are just a particular color, they can be non-fiction, fiction, way, fiction, middle grade, whatever. They can be whatever. It yeah. just have to be a particular. So um, I had a lot of white books to choose from, and I'm still unsure of my choices, but we're just going to go. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had very few white books to choose from, so I was like, uh, I don't know what to do. Well, yeah, there was quite a few I found. Yeah, there's, I like, they I like a good white book. pure, pure white. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, Alright, so we'll just start down at the end with Crystal, and she can give our first choice. So my first one is Tell Me Three Things by Julie Buxbaum. I've been on a contemporary kick lately, and I remember how much I loved this book. Mm. Um, it's the story about a girl named Jessie, and she's living in Chicago with a friend of hers because her mom passed away a couple years ago. But her dad has remarried, so she moves down to L.A., where she's going to this fancy prep school, and she has to learn to live with a new stepmom and stepbrother. She has no friends. She's just really homesick, and she's still grieving. Um, so just when she thinks she's like had enough of the school and she's just gonna run away back to Chicago. She gets an email from someone called Somebody Nobody, <laughs> SN for short. And they just kind of become her buddy and her guide through this whole new school thing. And I like that it's, I just lost my page, but it starts as like emails back and forth oh, cool. and then it switches to text messages because they're like, this is awkward. Can we just have right. a conversation? Um, so it's just, a great story about it kind of in the vein of Simon versus the homo mm -hmm. sapiens agenda with the whole email right. getting to know each other relationship thing but also the mystery that eventually she tries to figure out who it is and it's just a fun little twist to get through but it's just heartwarming and sweet and it makes you smile it's a good cover yeah I like that waffles, <laughs> waffles. yeah it's nice. fantastic sounds great nice yeah all right my first one is uh, one more thing, Stories and Other Stories by B.J. Novak. Uh, if you don't know B.J. Novak, this is him. He is <laughs> Ryan from The Office, uh, and he is actually the the head writer, I think. For, mm -hmm. He was the head writer for that show, so wow. he was not just Ryan the Jerk, Ryan the Jack, <laughs> whatever you want to call him. And he's also a very funny writer. Um, this is a series of short stories. Some of them are like very, very short. Some of them are like a page or two, and some of them are a bit longer. But they're just like clever, funny, absurdist short stories. Um, a couple of my favorites. There's one about, uh, um, it is called, sorry, uh, Kellogg's or the Last Wholesome Fantasy of the Middle School Boy. <laughs> Which is all about a boy who finds out that there's like a a contest by like Kellogg's, a cereal company, and they're gonna give away a huge chunk of money, uh, and so he like goes to the Kellogg's headquarters, and then unexpected things happen. <laughs> um, and there's another one that was like very silly, um, the uh, the Comedy Central roast of Nelson Mandela, which <laughs> <laughs> was like. Very sort of comedy inside baseball, but very funny if you are familiar with the roast format. Uh, yeah, they're just like, they're very weird and they're very funny. And uh, he's definitely like a smart guy. Yeah. 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 Uh, highly recommend this one. Cool. And I also love a good simple cover like right? that. Right? Yeah. yeah. And from the last five minutes, they suck you in right away. While we were waiting to shoot this, I opened it and read the one about walking on the moon. And I was like, this is, this is so good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I see your point. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to put it on my list. Yeah, like a lot of them are very like, like, uh, like culture satire. Yeah. It's, uh, he's great. I, uh, he also has a, a picture book called the, the book, the picture book with no pictures or something mm -hmm. like that. And it's also like equally funny, but for the little kids, he's great. It's cool. He's great. Awesome. Um, so my first one is, uh, culturally re relevant right now because I picked The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon and the movie of this just released last weekend. Fun. Haven't had a chance to see it yet, but I think Crystal and I might go see it next weekend. Um, 
and this book is incredible um i think more people have probably read everything everything but this one is just as good as everything everything and this is about a girl named natasha and she finds out that she is going to be deported from the country tomorrow like in one day mm -hmm. and so this whole book takes place over the course of one day and she runs into avoiding daniel and he through like a bunch of different meat cutes <laughs> um is trying to convince her to fall in love with him and it's this very sweet story but it's also this very sad story of her trying to remain in, in like this is her home and uh yeah. It's a beautifully written, it has a stunning cover. Mm -hmm. I yes. love, it's one of my there's all more. Time. There's more white on the back. There's more. It totally is, does it count is as white. a white cover. <laughs> um, <and> there's a <laughs> video on YouTube that you can Google and this is all done like hand by hand with That's different so strings. I love those. Um, so everyone looking at that. And it's just a wonderful story and I can't wait to see it brought to life on film because I think Me it'll too. make a great movie. Cool. All right, um, sticking with the contemporary theme, uh, my next one is the much loved Aww. to all the boys I loved before. Um, I just love this book. I love this series. I remember I read this when North we Carolina. went to North Carolina. <laughs> South Carolina. For South Carolina. Sorry, South yeah. Carolina for y'all. Best. Best. <laughs> and I, Karina had her copy there and I just kind of started reading it and then suddenly sitting awkwardly in this weird chair, I was like halfway done. <laughs> and I'm like, I think I'm going to need to buy my own. So by the time we got back to Vancouver, I had bought two and pre-ordered the third or something. <laughs> I was just like, I need more. Um, and it's just the story of Laura Jean, for those of you who don't know, who has like, she writes love letters to boys that she kind of has crushes on just to get the feelings out, but mm -hmm. never sends them. But somehow they all get sent. And <laughs> lo and behold. That's just the most um, embarrassing story. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's mortifying and I feel so bad for her. But through it comes so many good things. And I'm really looking forward to the sequel to the movie mm -hmm. yeah. because the, oh, such a fun the movie. second book in the series is actually my favorite because I just love John Ambrose so much. But uh, yeah, just do, your, do yourself a favor if it's you have a delight. <laughs> it is. It's delightful <laughs> and it makes you just happy. Mm -hmm. So cool. Yeah. Cute. My next one. Do a little reorganizing here. <laughs> Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to talk about that one yet. <laughs> At the My next one is Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. Um, this is actually like a book of writing advice. Oh, cool. But it's also very much just like life advice. I can't remember what section this is filed in in the bookstore, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Like, basically, like a, a really lovely memoir self-help book under the guise of being, right. all being writing advice but there's also very helpful writing advice in cool. here um the for example the the title bird by bird is advice that she got like from her dad when she was a kid and she was doing a project on like the birds of north america or right. something like that um and was like freaking out because it just seemed like so daunting that she had to write this thing and he was like you just go bird by bird like you have to break it down into those pieces mm -hmm. um and uh yeah it's it's uh again smart and funny and just like full of wisdom and i highly recommend it whether or not you are a writer cool what do i want to talk about next <laughs> um i'm gonna go with the diabolic by sj kincaid this is a sci-fi book um this features a uh, girl, a, a diabolic named Nemesis, and basically she has been, diabolics are created with the sole purpose of protecting um, a certain person. Mm. So Nemesis's sole purpose in life is to uh, protect Sidonia, who is the daughter of like an influential um, politician okay. in this world. So when Sidonia has been like summoned to like the intergalactic court, and it's a very dangerous kind of like manipulative situation. Mm -hmm. They send Nemesis in her stead, um, acting as like an exact copy of Sidonia. So uh -huh. Nemesis had been told her entire life that she has no humanity, like she's not a human. Um, so now she has to act in this political circle as Sidonia, as this person, and like have 
So do they, are they like shapeshifters? Like she can take on She She form? looks exactly like Sidonia. I don't oh, okay. remember if she was made that way or not, because it's been a while since I read this, but she does like interact as Sidonia. And it's, it's brutal, it's full of those court politics, it's sci-fi, it has some crazy twists at the end. The third book, uh, the second book came out a couple of years ago, and we have not heard about the third book yet. Ooh. This is a bit unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> but I really love this series. It is like a really good exploration of what is humanity. Neat. Mm. So I really like it and have a pretty badass cover. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll borrow that one from you. I was planning on reading more sci-fi this year. Sounds like a good one. It is a good one. We should buddy read. I think Corey gave me that book uh, a while back and cool. it's just sitting there. So we should encourage. It's, like it's underrated yeah. for a sci-fi. Yeah. And what a, that's a cool Looks cover. Cool. Oh, pretty bad. Ass. Very <laughs> razor sharp butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, next up for me is something a little different. I have a non-fiction book, which is the Choose Your Own Autobiography by Neil Patrick Harris. Um, this was, as it sounds, you can read his biography in order, or you can jump around and he sends you on like little different tangents. That's fun. That's such a uh, fun <laughs> It was really hard to put down. I love his humor, I loved his writing, and I just liked hearing about his life, because I'm the Doogie Howser generation. Right. I knew him when he was little, yeah. um, and now he's just incredible and he talks about being a kid and always liking you know show tunes and stuff and <laughs> it comes with photos but when i've he, always wanted to read that one yeah like for this one for instance i'm not sure this chapter is called it doesn't have chapter titles because you just <laughs> jump to pages but at the end of this chapter it says to work with sesame street again turn to page 242 <laughs> if you really enjoy making a short appearances on variety a variety of different tv shows Turn to page 215. If you learn the legitimacy of stage work or are just jonesing for some hot man love, go on to the next page. <laughs> yeah, it just, it's a, it, it's a treat. It was a lot of fun that and great. definitely a page turner. Cool. In any order. Yeah. He's <laughs> just like a fun man. Yeah, like, totally. Yeah. totally. <laughs> um, okay, the next one on my list is The Glass Castle. Not a lot of kids books for me today. Glass mm. Castle by Jeanette Walls. This is a, um, a full-on memoir by Jeanette Walls, um, who grew up um, mm, with a, in a dysfunctional family, yeah. to say the least. Um, her father, uh, well, mother, father and mother. Oh, actually, that reminds me. There's a companion book to this that's all from, about her grandmother, oh. which is also a memoir, but she wrote it, so it's like a speculative memoir, kind right. of. Right. Mm. Uh, called uh, Something About Horses. I can't remember. I'm blanking right now, but it's. I might even like that one better. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this is her memoir. It starts with her being an adult and sort of I think she's on her second marriage or she's in the middle of, uh, of her first marriage, which was unhappy and she still has, like it's holding on to a lot of like shame from her mm -hmm. upbringing. And then it's, I think the writing of the story is her way to unpack it all. But um, but yeah, she and her siblings like lived, you know, in, in many places sort of like out in the middle of the desert yeah. and like, you know, no no running water and, they weren't survivalists, but they, like, her dad wasn't always on the right side of the law, and her yeah. mom just kind of went along with things that perhaps were not in the best interest of her children. Um, and um, it's it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you liked Educated and haven't mm -hmm. read this one yet, um, Educated is very much, like, in, like, following in this one's footsteps. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is a, a gripping memoir. I read that one a few years ago, too, and it was, when I was reading it, it was a case of, how could this possibly be true? Mm -hmm. and like, it's just like, it's so bizarre. And I believe this book starts, I'm gonna put a cut there because I have to cut this out. <laughs> but I believe this book starts with her um, in a car. And when she looks out the window, she sees um, either her mother or her father as a, hom oh. a homeless on the side of the yes. road. Yes, yes. Um, Mom stood 15 uh, feet away. She had tied rags around her shoulders to keep up the spring yeah. chill and was picking through the trash. Yeah, oh man, I had forgot that. Yeah. I had also forgotten that this is signed to me. <laughs> I uh, I met her at the uh, the That's Vancouver awesome. uh, Writers Festival a few years Happy ago. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yay. Life is an adventure, Jeanette Walls. 
That's awesome. And also cool. the other title is right on the cover, Half Broke Horses. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's an incredible story. Yeah. It's also uh, quite quite recently, like within the last year, been made into a movie that a couple I think, years. A couple now. years, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that has... I haven't seen it. I can't remember her name. Usually that's where I'm good, but I I, I know that it <laughs> Captain Marvel. is a movie, but oh, oh Brie, Brie Larson. Larson, Brie Larson. There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, I really enjoy her too. So I'll bet you she uh, plays a good Jeanette Wells. Cool, neat, it's a very good book. Um, next up, I'm gonna go with one that was quite popular in 2018, right? Yep, that was 2018. <laughs> uh, last year was that year, and that's Sadie by Courtney Summers. Um, Sally has actually read this one. Yeah. I right. um, loved it. It's a really cool book. I listened to the audiobook, which, which is a fantastic audiobook experience. Um, it is about our titular girl named Sadie and kind of the mystery of surrounding her because uh, she, her little sister who she has been taking care of mm -hmm. and is very much kind of this unfortunate family situation. So her little sister was um, unfortunately quite brutally murdered and Sadie says like she doesn't agree with the police investigation she mm -hmm. says they didn't do enough this isn't the end of the story mm -hmm. and she goes off um, and tries to follow kind of like very light leads of what perhaps actually who actually murdered Sadie yeah. and it, the other point of view is from a man who's doing a podcast called The Girls mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, and he's trying to also figure out where Sadie now is Right. Um, kind of following in her footsteps. Yeah, so he's always, mm -hmm. like, his timeline yes. is, is always behind hers. Ahead of hers, actually. Ahead of hers. Yes, sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're not they're staggered, staggered, kind of going like this the whole time. It's so page-turning. Oh, yeah. Like, it's a really great thriller. Um, I feel like YA doesn't always do thrillers properly, um, and this one is fantastic. It has an ending. <laughs> it, it has an ending. We're just gonna say that. Um, but it's incredible, and if you haven't read it, read it, everything you pick it up. If you like audiobooks, the audiobook is great. Cool. Yeah. I will add that to my audiobook list. Yeah, because the podcast like actually exists as a podcast. Yeah. In the audiobook. Oh, neat. So that's fun. Okay. Very cool. All right. From something fun to something silly. <laughs> um, last weekend I read Neil Gaiman's Fortunately the Milk and this was a fun little ride. It's great. I just picked it up for the sake of holding it in my hand and I just started reading and I read about half of it and then the other night, the next night, I didn't want to feel lazy while my boyfriend was doing the dishes so I literally <laughs> stood in the kitchen like I was participating and helping and read the last 30 pages and I laughed out loud. Um, the illustrations are amazing. Uh, I just want to color them in. Which it makes me want to go back because I, I listen to the audiobook which Neil Gaiman reads. Ah. Uh, so, but it makes me want to go back and like actually read mm -hmm. it because the illustrations look great. So it is the story of a dad who has to go out to get milk for his children's cereal, breakfast cereal. And on his way he gets sucked up by aliens, he ends up with pirates, he hooks up with this Professor Stegosaurus <laughs> who has a time machine air balloon and it's just an insane adventure but it's so much fun and I just I can't recommend it enough it's a fun super quick read pirates vampires dinosaurs aliens ponies time travel right. <laughs> it has it all <laughs> um, but yeah picked this up on a whim just because I liked the cover sometime last year and glad I just started reading it for no reason and then burned through it. Mm -hmm. Very cute. It was great. Nice. Mm -hmm. My next one. <laughs> okay, I was. These are my two other options. So I'm just gonna quickly show these to you and then not talk about them because I talk about both of these too much. <laughs> okay. One is a David Sedaris book, Naked. He actually has multiple white covered ones. This is ah. one I brought because it was lighter of the two. Uh, and Arlo Finch in the Valley of Fire. But you have heard of me talk about both Arlo Finch and David Sedaris to no end. So, no more. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to talk about Lethal White by Robert Galbraith, who, as we all know now, is actually J.K. Rowling. What? Um, <laughs> spoiler. <laughs> um, but uh, this is the the fourth in the series, mm -hmm. I believe, following Cormoran Strike and his 
trusty assistant Robin. Um, but uh, this one was really different from the yes. other three. Mm -hmm. um, the third one in particular was like stomach churningly Rips gross up. in some parts. <laughs> um, they're always uh, murder mystery, or yeah, yeah, they're always murder yeah, mysteries, right? Murders yeah. Um, Chrome and Strike is a uh, private detective um, and sort of has gained throughout the course of the series some. Um, like a celebrity appeal. So people seek him out whether or not he wants them to. And, but this one um, was a real like political one, which was interesting. Um, yeah, there's like a, the family of a big politician mm -hmm. hires him, but then there's also a lot of stuff to do with just like the British yeah, par parliament and things like that. Um, it is also <laughs> in JK Rowling style, much, much longer than the other ones. Um, <laughs> Fourth book syndrome. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, if you haven't, if you're looking for like a great adult uh, detective mm -hmm. murder mystery thriller series, and you haven't already read these, mm -hmm. they're fantastic. Do be warned that the third one's gross, but it's also <laughs> yeah. one of my favorites. But really yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. He's yeah. on like my or she is on my Insta buy list. Like as soon as one mm -hmm. comes out, I'm gonna read it. Yeah. Because. They're fantastic, and I think I liked that one the best of the whole series because yeah. outside of the political and the family stuff, I liked the rural setting mm -hmm. for like the, right. the other parts of it, and the whole stuff that Robin's dealing with, and just yeah. this like really twisty family stuff. Yeah, yeah this one was really good. There's a lot more character development in this one. Way more character development. Like you, much and less murder. <laughs> much, 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 yeah. much less murder, much more character. I think I kept expecting this one to turn into more of the other ones and it just like never really <laughs> yeah, did. Um, less but, less uh, murder but the mystery was really solid in my opinion. Totally. Like I liked being And like, there's a bunch what? of moving parts. There's like yeah. multiple stories going on that, that uh, you find out why they're all going on at the same time. Anyways, it's great. Murder mysteries are my favorite, especially over Christmas time. I think that's when I read this one. Nice. You gotta read it. So my next one is going to be a book I read when I was 16 years old, and that is Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. Um, I've talked about Murakami before. I'm a big fan. We all know this. Um, this is the first Murakami book, Murakami book I ever read. Um, I read it while I was living there mm -hmm. in Japan, and uh, it was the first time I ever had like a really bad book hangover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's it's a heavy book. It's also I would say Murakami's least weird. Okay. Like, his books are known for being very weird yeah. and kind of, like, fabulous in ways, and I... This one doesn't really have a lot of that, but it is about, kind of, a college age guy. I have to remember. It's been a long time since I read this <laughs> book, and it's set in the... 60s? Yeah, it's set in the 60s, so it's, uh, the Beatles are really big, and, like, Japan is into the Western culture a lot. Yeah. Um, and he meets a mysterious kind of... Yeah, I like the two green world kind of character named Midori, which is the Japanese word for green. Okay. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just kind of his experiences with her and like, it's, I feel like this is a book I really want to reread because I feel like I would unpack it a lot more yeah. if I read it now. And I don't know if I would necessarily like it as much more if I read it now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it is, it, like, there's a lot of like, quite there's a lot of like explicit sex scenes and things like that and like the characters aren't necessarily good people I would say okay but they are very intriguing people and it is very heartbreaking it's a, definitely an adult novel um there are some definite content warnings in here um so like if you're if you're sensitive to th uh, like things like you know drug abuse and suicide and things like that be warned definitely a part of this novel um but it was, it's it stuck with me for the past 14 years. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's time for a reread and see Yeah, it sounds still, like it. Still holds one of my top lists. Yeah, I really, really enjoy Mirror Candy's writing. Cool. Awesome. So, my final book. <laughs> 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 it's a day in the life of Marlon Bundo. Adorable. Um, this is the story that John Oliver did on last week tonight yes 
and I just needed it in my life. I've also listened to the audiobook, <laughs> but it is the story about Marlon Bundo, who goes out and he meets another boy bunny, and these two boy bunnies would like to get married one day. <laughs> and all of the animals out there are like, that is Cute. a fantastic idea, good job you, but the vice president <laughs> is like, boy bunnies can't marry boy bunnies. And I think my favorite part of that is that, one second, <laughs> everybody's excited, <laughs> is that Mike Pence as a stink bug just <laughs> looks incredible. <laughs> Just the artwork in this is so fantastic, and I love all the little oh animals. Goodness, it's so cute. And they all go to their wedding. They take a vote on who should be in charge, the stink bug or not the stink bug. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a fun little twist on, because there is a Marlon Bundo in the White House. Yeah. And, but I like this story better. Yes. Very cute. Yeah. <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> I also have a picture book for my last book, and that is Triangle by Mac Barnett and John Classen. Um, there are now three of these books. Mm. There's also a square and a circle, but this is the first one, um, and I love it so much. Uh, it's very strange, as lots of Mac Barnett's books are. They tend to have like a bit of a dark side to them, um, but this is about uh, Triangle. This is Triangle. Um, <laughs> And he decides that he's going to play a prank on his friend Square. Uh, and it starts a, a bit of a, a prank war, <laughs> kind of. Um, and uh, I won't give away the ending because it's worth the reveal to find it yourself. <laughs> but um, it's so cute. I, I love his artwork. I love <laughs> all of like the textures and everything um, that, he, that he gets into his... Uh, illustrations. The triangle is so expressive. He's so <laughs> expressive. All he has are these two eyes and they uh, they convey a lot of different emotions yes. <laughs> throughout the story. Um, uh, yes, this book is always also about Triangle's friend Square and the sneaky trick that he plays on him. It's Cute. so funny. It's so funny. <laughs> I need to I need to buy the other two as well, um, which yeah, one's about like, what is art? Just sort of <laughs> one's about I can't remember, but they're they're great. I love Mac Barda. Too cute. Awesome. Um, so my final book was one of my favorite books of 2017, I believe, and that is Release by Patrick Ness. Um, this is another book that takes place over the course of one day. I have two of those. <laughs> um, it is about and also has this trippy cover that still kind of gives me vertigo. Um, but it is about a boy named Adam. Um, a gay boy named Adam and his super religious family and it's basically just him going through a day where a lot is changing in his life. He finds out his best friend's gonna move away, um, he still thinks he might be in love with his first boyfriend but he has a new boyfriend, um, and then there's also this like weird magical side story happening. Ah. That, so like you just kind of get thrown into this whole other world that's also happening in the same town but okay. it's nothing to do with Adam. Okay. Um, I just love it. I think it's a really, it's a wonderfully written book. It's a very fast read. I also really appreciated um, how Adam uh, has approached his sexuality, like how he's writ how the story is written about his sexuality. I think it's gonna be. I think it's a very important book, especially uh, for gay teens. I think it would be a wonderful read. Um, I just fell in love with it. I can't wait to reread it. I can't wait for another Patrick Ness book because I think he has one coming soon and it's been a couple of years and I'm ready for a new one. <laughs> um, I don't think this is everybody's favorite Patrick Ness, but I, it's one that I read years ago now and I still think about just how well it was written. And I don't even know if I like fully understood what was happening with that like magical side story. Like I don't even know if I got the point, but I it's just still, <laughs> still, stuck with still loved it. Yeah. So, and Adam is just like, he's, he's deeply, like he's flawed. He's a teenage boy. Like he's not like this, he doesn't have all the right ideas or mm -hmm. all the right answers and he's and that's very much evident and uh just loved him as a character cool mm -hmm. and it makes you want to fall over when you look at this <laughs> <Yeah>. cover <laughs> um, i actually went um did i yeah i went and met patrick ness when i got this book and patrick ness is just a delightful human being yeah he is. he's wonderful cool. so mm -hmm. 
It's always nice when you find that out. Yes, yeah. it's always nice. <laughs> so those were the white books that we wanted to share with you. We'll be back again for the next installment of Colorful Covers. Mm -hmm. Not sure what color will be yet. We shall see. But <laughs> um, thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye.